3.2 or 3.1 B. Okay, now we're going to expand on this a little bit. So let's say we have 1 plus sine of x cotangent of x secant of x all over secant of x. How would I simplify that thing out? Can I just cancel my secants like that? Absolutely not. And you're going, well, why not, Mr. Bierschbach? Well, if in this problem I have 1 plus 4 over 4, what does that equal? Well, if you're Molly, it equals 1. But Molly says, I'm smarter than that. It's 5 over 4. This is why you can't just cancel where there's addition and subtraction. Because is 5 over the 4, is 5 over 4 same as 1? No. So you just can't cancel willy-nilly like that. Okay? So don't cancel willy-nilly like that. So no, you can't cancel like that. So going into the problem, what's the best plan of attack? Well, if you're Riley, it'll be walk over to Mr. Bierschbach's desk and say, hey, how do you do this? Right? Yeah, yeah but that's not the best plan of attack. What's the cotangent of x equal to? Cosine of x over sine of x. What's the secant equal to? 1 over cosine of x. What's secant equal to? All right. So we're good this so far, right? Can I cancel anything? I can cancel the signs right here, right? I can cancel the cosines here, right? So I get 1 plus 1 over 1 over cosine of x. What's 1 plus 1? So I get 2 over 1 over cosine of x. Do I have a complex fraction? Yes, yes I do. How do I get rid of my complex fraction? Multiply by the denominator of the denominator in both the numerator and the denominator. Did I say that clearly enough? So the cosines cancel here, so I get 2 cosine of x. Put away the coloring book. All right. Now for the slightly more difficult stuff. No, it's not difficult enough yet. We want to write tangent of x in terms of secant of x. This should be easy. Okay? I want to write tangent of x in terms of secant of x. So, is there anything on your note card that puts tangent in terms of secant anywhere? There's a Pythagorean identity that does that. What's my Pythagorean identity that involves tangents and secants?
But I want tangent in terms of secant. So what I want to do is I want my tangent on the left-hand side. So I'm going to write it like that. Okay? If you want to write it like that as the first step, that's what I would do. Okay. How do we get tangent alone? Subtract 1. Now, how do I get tangent squared or tangent alone? I didn't say tangent squared alone. How do we get tangent alone? Like square root, like ding, 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 ding. The winner. We take the square root of each side. So tangent of x equals positive or negative the square root of secant squared of x minus 1. In the second part of what you're doing today, we don't put things in terms of sines and cosines. What we're doing is putting whatever this is in terms of whatever this is. Okay? So in this case, we can leave things like that. Now, that wasn't an overly difficult problem. Okay? Now, let's do another one. Put cotangent of x in terms of sine of x. So we want cotangent all alone on the left side and whatever else involving sines on the right side. All right. So what on your Pythagorean sheet of identities involves both cotangent and sine? And some of you said nothing. And you guys are right, which is nothing. Okay, those of you who said nothing. Yeah, you're right. But sine is what else by itself? Sine of x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x. Sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. So, is there anything involving cotangent and cosecant? There's a Pythagorean identity there, right? So, you would write cotangent squared of x equals, or plus 1, right? Plus 1 equals cosecant squared of x. By the end, we'll get sine involved in this. But let's get cotangent squared alone first. So what do we do? Subtract 1. So cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x minus 1. Then what do we do to each side to get it down to just plain and simple cotangent? So cotangent of x equals plus or minus the square root of cosecant squared of x minus 1. Now, can I change cosecant into sine? Sure can. It's 1 over sine squared of x minus 1. You have to put it in terms of sine of x. I didn't say put it in terms of cosecant of x. It has to be in terms of sine of x. So we have to do that step. Now, in the past, I've been extra super mean. And I said, this isn't good enough. Okay. What else would you do? Perfect question, Miss Allen. What else would I do? Well, I'd get a common denominator here.
1 is the same as sine squared of x over sine squared of x. That's the same as 1, right? So that way I can get a common denominator. So in my numerator, I have 1 minus sine squared of x. In my denominator, I have the square root of sine squared of x. What's the square root of sine squared? Because now I have rationalized my denominator. There's no longer a square root in my denominator. What? All right. We had 1 over sine squared here. 1 over sine squared here, right? Mm -hmm. So then to get a common denominator, I changed my 1 into sine squared over sine squared. So I have 1 minus sine squared in the numerator and sine squared in my denominator. So I just, instead of having the square root around the whole thing, I put a square root at the top, square root around the bottom. Because if you take the square root of the bottom, then it's just sine of x. That's called rationalizing the, your denominator because the math gods say you cannot have a square root in the denominator. You've heard that before. Combined it into one big fraction. Right. Yep. That's what I did. Now, because this is Halloween, my treat to you is this. I'll let you leave it right there. I won't make you rationalize the denominator here. All right. Have you had enough for today? Ooh. That was kind of loud and boisterous out of a couple people. All right, page 165, numbers 15 through 20 all. Six more problems. Now, do not, do not, do not, do not throw away your papers or lose your papers because we will have four separate assignments out of section 3.1, 3.1a, 3.1b, 3.1c, 3.1d. When we're all done with 3.1, then I'll walk around and grade all four assignments. Okay? So do not lose your assignments. Okay? Do not lose your assignments. If you want to keep putting them on the same piece of paper and just continuing on, that's fine. I don't care. If you want them on separate pieces of paper, that's fine. I don't care. Just don't you lose your assignments. Don't throw them away. Don't rip them out of your notebook and tear them halfway apart and... Thank you.